Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at this old Toshiba Satellite Pro laptop that I picked up at the Goodwill recently. Okay, taking a look at the model number on here, we have a Satellite Pro 435 CDS. Uh, it's running an Intel Pentium, I believe this is either a Pentium 1 or the original Pentium Mobile. For some reason the sticker was kind of moved up from, it, it's usually here and you can kind of see the indent if you look close enough. Um, it's made by Toshiba, this was around, I'm dating it around 96-ish. Picked this thing up for $5 mainly because of its condition. It, the condition on this thing is excellent. Uh, this pointer was not ripped off, none of the, um, the AccuPoint's still on, none of the keys were ripped off. Um, a few of the keys had faded, but I do think that this laptop has been refurbished at some point, and I'll show you why. Now, that's the first reason why I do think that this laptop was refurbished at some point around 2003-ish, when this laptop was not just a paperweight, when it was actually useful for browsing the web. There were actually cameras that could browse the web. I actually had a camcorder that was capable of browsing the web. Uh, it had a little touch screen on it, I think. Uh, v West Life actually covered that. But I could never actually get mine to work. But here's the reason. Most of these batteries are dead if they were at all close to original. I think that this one, the battery dates around 2003 because I'm not getting the full four hours, but I am getting around two hours, so it's not completely dead yet. You'll see it power on right now, and it'll do a mem test, but it does actually work. Okay, so scan disk has completed. Do you want to quit scan disk now? Yes, I do. Okay, so it should now boot up Windows 98. Exit. Just... All right, I'm not sure exactly why it's exiting. I mean, not exiting. Oh, okay. I was hitting continue because I thought it was actually going to be exiting out of scan disk. <laughs> but that always just ends up running every time. So we are running Windows 98, uh, not me. This was originally running either DOS, I mean, it's either DOS 3.1 or probably Windows 95. I'm guessing Windows 95 because, as I said, I probably dated this laptop around 1996-ish. Give or take a year or two. This could be at the latest 98, at the earliest 95. Okay, so it finally booted up into Welcome to Windows. Just let me put in my password and I'll get you guys a view from the desktop. Okay, so she's booting up. Um, we are at the desktop, just logged in. Uh, this originally actually belonged to a church, a Fair Oaks Presbyterian church near us. And I guess they donated it to Goodwill. And uh, it's funny because there were laptops that were only slightly younger than this one from around 98 or around... I, I don't know, when did the Pentium 3s come out? But anyway, there were Pentium 3s and they were a bit thinner and just because they were a bit thinner and not a monstrous old they were still very old and you wouldn't really want to use one of those a Pentium 4 would be the oldest thing I would use for a main machine uh, but they priced them at like eighty dollars so that's why I just jumped and besides we're actually running a full battery power this thing actually has a built-in power supply so that's one of the reasons I bought it, because I didn't have to hunt for a power brick at M&M Computers. Okay, forgive me guys, I can't actually run fraps on this thing. So, uh, this is the desktop. I just kind of zoomed in the T3i. Uh, let me dim the lights a bit. Uh, just let me walk over here and dim them. And hopefully that will make it so you guys can actually see the screen a lot better, because we're going to be playing some Doom. So, uh, here's the desktop. We're going to play some Doom, then some Oregon Trail. So, let me get Doom set up. Starting up Doom. It actually runs in an MS-DOS emulator that was still in Windows 98. I'm not sure if they took it out for 2000. Listen to that music. That is some good music. Let me further dim the lights. Yeah, the screen's just terrible. You're not even seeing any glare. But this was Doom on PC. This was the best version of Doom. It was way better than the SNES version, the 32X version. Not sure, probably wasn't on Sega CD, but this was the best version of Doom that you could get at the time. Uh, for the sake of this, I'm just going to play I'm Too Young to Die.
Let me turn down the brightness, maybe. Maybe if I were to turn down. Oh, that's brightness up. Okay. Alright, that's... A, sorry about that, guys. It's not even my camera. It's just... The screen is just... It looks about the same here. I'm actually playing through the camera, so... This is Doom on a Pentium 1. Haven't played this in forever, so I think you just go down this hallway. This was a state-of-the-art first-person smooter. As we call them now. And that yellow stuff that you're seeing in the corner, that's actually kind of on the screen. This screen's very faded. I don't really think that that was replaced. And I think the person who used this was running on full brightness for most of the time. So that could come into a factor later on in the life of the laptop. But, I mean, it runs great. I mean, I, can, I play this game all the time in the car, so... Yeah, that is Doom. So let me see if I can finish this level here. So close. Oh god, demon. Alright. So you're not fighting Russia in this game, you're fighting demons. And you know why you're fighting demons? Because they're mean. You see, you're not at all questioning yourself for killing these guys because they're not human. They are demons. Alright! So that is Doom on this laptop. And so now we're going to be playing some good old Oregon Trail. This was actually very high tech for the time because it doesn't actually have a floppy drive. That was an external add-on. Okay, so we got Oregon Trail 2 started up. So let's click on Run Oregon Trail 2. I love the sound effects in this game even though it's a DOS based game so there's not really that much graphics. Yeah. See that was high tech graphics for the time. That's the kind of laughter that you hear and you're home alone and you live alone. You get out. <laughs> and then it gives you like some history on the, the US and that stuff. And I can get that from the history books. Alright let's get to the game. Alright, loading game. Okay, so we got Oregon Trail 2 started up, so let's click on Run Oregon Trail 2. I love the sound effects in this game, even though it's a DOS based game, so there's not really that much graphics. See, that was high tech graphics for the time. That's the kind of laughter that you hear and you're home alone and you live alone. You get out. <laughs> and then it gives you like some history on the, the US and that stuff. And I can get that from the history books. Alright, let's get to the game. Alright, loading game. Okay, so we gotta choose our prologue we'll put the journey of Stan we'll just choose a random name and yeah you're a gunsmith whatever and there's no full screen actually so let's just go hit the trail all right continuing this game actually is a lot of fun unlike a lot of games and you, you arrive at the Canesville Crossing River. This is about two steps above those like DOS games. Like just a couple steps above where, because it actually shows a picture. Like those DOS games where you're actually... That music is starting to become annoying, just let me turn that down. Alright, so this is a couple steps above those DOS games. You know, like uh, Zork, where you gotta like type in Go North. And you'll like go north. At least this one shows a picture. So, I mean, this is fun for like a party game. Oh, let's just ford the river. And what happens next? Okay, so it shows a little animation of you guys fording the river and swamped wagon. An empty mess. I guess it's the only option. 
winter quarters site continue. I'm just gonna keep see how fast I can kill off these guys. Ford the river. Even though the ferry is free. Swamped wagon. Uh, bad cold. Uh, let's see here. Now let's get advice from some random person. So yeah, this is basically the game. I mean, if, if you play it with a group of friends, it can be quite fun. Okay, whatever. I wonder if that was just like the janitor guy at whoever developed this game. Like, they just had the janitor at the office who happens to be from the south. I don't even know where this game was developed, but I mean, I, I bet you those people were not actually paid. You could, I'm sure it's somewhere on IMDB. Okay, so yeah, this is kind of getting boring, but you get the idea. You can play some old games on this laptop, and it's still quite fun. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say about this thing. I mean, it's a brick. You can haul around, and it's just a... Uh, it's basically a notebook slash retro gaming thing, and I, I paid five bucks for it, and I, I had... I'm having quite a fun time playing through some older games like uh, Duke Nukem and uh, yeah, some older shooters and that stuff. I'm sure there's some good point and click adventure games. Probably going to check out some of Yahtzee's videos, um, the guy from Zero Punctuation, see if any of those point and click adventure games he plays interest me. So that is it for this video, guys. Just uh, see you guys in the next one. I'm very tired. As you can see, I actually had to change around the lighting halfway through because I had to go to the dentist to continue filming. So I'll see you guys in the next one. And until then, kick it.